So uh, welcome to a round table discussion and we are right now in uh, the city of Copenhagen. It's the 3rd of March 2015 and uh, we are a group of people here. Uh, I, I do, don't want to present everyone because there will be a sign down here that you can see. Um, and we're living in very strange time, uh, times, uh, period uh, of, of world history where, where things are getting uh, pretty tense and things are happening all over the world. And in Europe recently, we have had some uh, uh, terror events. And uh, with us today, we have a, a a member of this discussion forum uh, that has uh, dealt uh, very much into this subject for uh, the last, I believe, 30 years, and uh, it is Ole Dammo, uh, independent researcher, author of a huge book on the murder of Ole Palme called Good uh, Time Slow Motion. Um, and I believe that the way we can deal with these events is not by just guessing out in the blue air and, and uh, making counter conspiracies uh, towards conspiracies, but uh, actually to, uh, to see very precisely what, what is happening and to compare, compare, compare. Patterns, patterns, events, persons, um, facts before theories. It's not wrong to make theories, of course. Uh, we need to make theories, but we need to be able to uh, shoot them down if, if they are not valid. So, uh, uh, one thing you can say about uh, these terror events, there are people who have an agenda, who want something with a terror event. And there's a word uh, that I believe is now getting pretty mainstream. For 10 years, 10 years ago, it would be almost impossible to talk about a false flag. People would just go, a false flag, what is that? Is that a, a pirate flag? Yeah, in a way it is a pirate flag, because it's not the Danish flag. Well, it could be the Danish flag if the Germans wanted to go to, go to war with Denmark. Then they would probably wave the Danish flag and say, we are under attack. But I, I believe, Ole, you have a very good explanation for the... Mm, short, brief history of what is a false flag, actually. It is a long, long story about false flags because it's been used for many, 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 many years. It's an old naval term and it's uh, in the old days where if you wanted to hammer, rape and plunder a country or someone, instead of just doing it and then maybe causing problems with your neighboring countries or international relationships and so on, what you did was you put your the enemy flag on one of your own ships and then you let that ship attack yourself. That would then justify you going. And it's, these false flag operations have the same theme all the time. They secretly create a problem to get a reaction that will justify their solution. It's an old Roman template, problem, reaction, solution. And I would humbly suggest that when you look in history, I think history is extremely important to study so that we can learn from it because it has a very strange way of repeating itself. And false flag operations, as far as I've been able to find out, more or less all wars in modern time are based on false flag operations. It, it, it gets exposed like 30, 40 years down the line, but it keeps coming up again and again that we see these big, big historical events were based on lies and justifying their solution. Yeah. So yeah, and, and many of these uh, events have actually been naval events. Yeah, that's I true. I mean, the the, the Tonkin Bay, Tonkin Bay, 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 Bay would be, yeah. be typical for that. Uh, I think may I, I think yeah, yeah. something to that because actually even in the mainstream media, the, uh, such as na newspaper as Berlings Gazette has actually said that the, the Tonkin Bay uh, episode was um, a false flag. Mm -hmm. So it's now also uh, among mainstream media uh, newspapers. Yes, it is. Oh, they use so that exact term? Yes, the they false use flag. false flag. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's quite mainstream. Very good. Yeah, yeah. But it was after the bo Boston bombing, that was when <coughs> the mainstream got it. So the, the, I know the, when you check the search word for false flag before and after uh, the Boston bombing, 
it was just like from nothing up to woof. So that was, and I've done everything I can to pump it out there to, to expose the methods that, that are being used because I think if you can just see the method, if normal people can see the method, then you don't buy into it. It is like I know sometimes I say it's just like you watch a magician doing a trick yeah. and you think, oh my God, it's incredible, it's magic. And you do it, you see one, two, three, four times, it's still magic, it's incredible. And then maybe you change your position and suddenly you see from another angle and you see, oh my God, he's doing it behind his back. Yeah. The second you see that he's doing it behind his back, you won't focus on this one anymore. And as soon as he even does like that, you will say, come on, give me a break. I'm not even going to go there. Yeah. So that's why I really want to expose the ingredients, how they're pulled off, the, the series of events and, and so on, so that we can make a stop to this madness, to stop it, to be, get one step ahead in, instead of always being one step behind. And it's interesting when, when mainstream picks up on this, we can be sure that a lot of people mm. have, uh, because we are always before mainstream. I mean, people are before mainstream and secretly, uh, silently demanding mainstream to feed our, our, our needs. There must be a ground for mainstream to, to do, do that. So we can be sure that, I don't know how many percent of American people any longer believe uh, in the Kennedy assassination or the 9-11 as uh, uh, the official narrative. I think it's a majority of Americans actually <coughs> saying that the yeah. 9/11 was, a, you know, an insider job. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <coughs> so and so mainstream has to to <coughs> say something about it, but then of course you must also be aware that mainstream will try to bend this uh, word uh, mm. in other terms. So, yeah. I think it's important to say that or explain also that just by saying that mainstream is pushing it this way doesn't mean that every single journalist is working very hard for a secret agenda absolutely not but through the ownership of these networks and and also the chief editors it's the chief editors that is under the ownership and so on that is where the filtration is done often gently so that the journalists don't even know and I used to work as a journalist I had no idea that my chief editor was doing his uh, military service with a with a psychological um, what do you call it I don't know the English term for it defense the psychological defense and also I, I did uh, music and stuff for TV4 in Sweden and so I was doing for the news uh, the news edition sometimes and I had a friend and he noticed when they had meetings where there was a not very subtle, but when they were going through the news that was uh, going to be presented that day, that some news were just like, absolutely not. It was absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And he noticed a very clear pattern of the type of information that was... And this was these type of events. I also want to say when it comes to media that I spent many, many years looking into the Olaf Palmer assassination like you did, digging, digging, digging very deep in, into it. I had two friends murdered. And I even felt threatened, so I left Sweden and moved to Spain just to get away. But uh, one of the things, while I was doing music for TV4, there was this uh, documentary made in Germany about the assassination of Olaf Palme. Incredibly, very, very good documentary at that time. It's called Murder in Stockholm. You can find it on YouTube now. But uh, uh, it, was, uh, it won the prize for best documentary in Germany and Italy in 1996. So I thought I will bring it to, there's a special program in, in Sweden that is uh, sort of, they're really looking into these type of things. It's called Kalla Fakta, Cold Facts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I thought this will be the place, you know, I was so happy finding they were naming people, they were showing parts of what actually happened. And so I went to the chief, uh, the, the guy responsible for the program saying, I got a VHS with this documentary. Uh, please have a look. So he said, what's it about? I said, it's about the Palmer assassination. He said, so is it about the official version, the Christopher Pets on the Patsy version? Uh, he didn't say the Patsy version, but he said, is it about the Christopher Pets on? I said, no, it's a totally different one. It's about that there was a certain involvement by Swedish police and so on and so on. And he said, uh, no, sorry, but that we have a company policy that we decided on to go for Christopher Pets on or nothing else. Okay. I said, but you, you're a journalist. I said, here's a VHA, you take it, 
you watch it. If you think it's crap, dump it in the garbage bin. But at least check it out. If you're a journalist, that is the job of a journalist. Open your mind, have an open mind, look at it, look at the facts. If it makes sense, present it. If it doesn't, do not. Mm -hmm. But here there was boom, and this is this wall we're up against mm -hmm. when it comes to media. It's like an invisible wall, like a secondary conspiracy of silence that just follows. It's the official version or boom. Yeah. Yep. And they will hit you <coughs> in different ways by intimidation or threats or something like if you keep pushing or just put a tinfoil hat on your on your head and call you a conspiracy theorist. This term was created just after the JFK assassination yeah, yeah. and they hit everyone who just put a critical finger towards a different option of a, of a solution. As soon as you even started criticizing conspiracy theorist, and the reason why conspiracy theorists is because then there's a doubt. It's not a conspiracy researcher, mm -hmm. it's not somebody looking into conspiracy facts, it's conspiracy theories. So, uh, just uh, internet. No, no, I have to put it on the table. So we may, we can be absolutely sure that right now there will be some redacting going on uh, in relation to uh, the, the Copenhagen event, and I, I believe we do not have to. Uh, to go in, in very much detail about the, the, the Copenhagen event, but could we have a, a sort of elevator version of it uh, just for, for a brief uh, synopsis? It's difficult, I know um, Ole, you are a man of great detail and it's the, as you say, the devil is in the detail, um, but how would, would we explain uh, the, this event just briefly for, for a person that uh, is um, in not in Denmark, or in Denmark, and, and doesn't uh, know about it. People were shot, or were they not shot, or... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you're saying is a very good question, and very difficult to say, yeah. because sometimes we have real events, sometimes we have totally staged events, where we're just talking like a film set, with actors, to creating a situation or something, an event, to get the reaction, we're back to problem, reaction, solution, to get the reaction from us seeing it so that they can present their solution. And sometimes we have combinations that they eliminate enemies or people at the same time as there's a stage event and so on. So it's, it's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. And like with Paris, I don't know where the people in the uh, newspaper thing, were they killed? I know for sure the police officer, that part of it was absolutely staged, the whole other things were done. But were they eliminated? I'm not sure. Because you have a problem also when you eliminate people, uh, that there are consequences, uh, you know, it's... Uh, but at the same time, when it's a stage event and you claim that somebody died, then you have to create a whole identity, the whole thing around that person. So it, it's complicated. But uh, one of the things is, uh, I think it's very important to study not one case, but many different cases in great details because it's when you start seeing that same pattern again and again and again and again, you might draw the conclusion that it's not by coincidence that there might be something different behind it. And one of the things that there's different, uh, I can just go through a problem, reaction, solution, a normal one, is if it's an assassination or if it's a terror act, they're more, more or less uh, similar. The thing is that, uh, uh, if I'm the person in power and what I want to uh, have a, a more militarized police, I want uh, tanks in the streets, I want drones to be able to pop off people at right, left and center, I want the people, the police to be able to kick in doors, arrest you, not give you the chance to have a lawyer, to be able to totally invade your privacy, to check everything you do with the camera. Cam I'm actually describing society in quite a at the moment in the state, but yeah. in the old days, before all of these terror acts, if I just did that, I would have major problems on my hand, maybe with financial boycotts from other countries, maybe uh, demonstrations, uprisings, and all of these things. So the thing is to secretly create a problem that people are not aware of, so I, to get the reaction, the emotional, so you don't use your brain, the, ah, that one they want, mm -hmm. and then the solution in it. So the, the ingredients in one of these is you need a patsy, you need somebody to blame for it, and that one needs to work in media. That, it's a group or a person, they need to look strange. 
They need to have strange names. They need to look weird or something like that to get the impact. Look at this as like a marketing campaign you need with public relations, how to seduce your mind into welcoming the, uh, their agenda. So you have the pet, see that's one part of it. This is a totally innocent person or group, they have absolutely nothing to do with, but they're the ones taking the fall for it. Okay. Then you have evidence that is being prepared so that as soon as it's happened, if the bomb explodes or somebody's killed, it will, turn, it will point straight to that one. So it boom, whoosh, like this. You prepare media beforehand, you just pump out, you leak out about this group or person, ooh, ooh, like this, so that people have read something about that one that makes them suspicious, so that when they say he was the one doing it, yeah, he is, I know, I read something somewhere about that is the way they do and it. And if he had done something actually, because this guy told me he had, had a good yeah, this is, They, they yeah. handpick these people, yeah, you know, that, so that they can, it's easier to, to show no, but he was violent. No, he had mental problems. No, he had... It's yeah. the same story again and again. I, and then another thing that is very important is, is, is you have your own investigation on standby with hand-picked people, key people, so that whenever that, the event goes off, your investigation goes in with your people. And so all normal, honest, decent investigators, police officers and so on, they're just pushed to the side. And in comes you, and their task is to point. They went that away, that away, that away, that away. Anything but in towards the real truth. They said that. That must have been the, the hands on the type in, in, in the pandemic. It's the same, the yeah, same, the yeah. same. They are there to build a wall around the truth and to talk to media saying we're looking so intensely in all the wrong places, pointing to the Patsy all the time, and also deal with people like myself. People that don't give up, they have what they call cleaners, you know, scary people that come and say knock, 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 knock at night time. Mm. Not very nice. And when you see these things, the big conspiracy, the big assassination and so on, there's always a long line of people that are suicided, are car accidents, uh, cancer, heart attacks and so on. What do we think about MK Ultra? MK Ultra was... Yeah. A, it was, uh, that's the name of, the, in the old days, in mm -hmm. the old case, it has advanced a lot. Advanced a lot. In some of these assassinations, MKUltra is involved, or what is called mind control. Mm -hmm. and, but it's, I would say it's mostly used to, for the patsy itself. They use somebody who's very, uh, real, what do you call it, uh, open to be manipulated with mind-wise. But they don't use it for, the, for the, the assassins themselves. These are mercenaries, skilled people, trained killers. But the guy taking the fall for it is the one that is mind controlled, I would say. But I'm not an expert in this area. I know people in the CIA who used to work with these things and also flown people to uh, different uh, prisons uh, and also different areas in Nevada and so on, where there were what they called the famous professors were dealing with these people, doing mm -hmm. things to them. I, yeah, that's an interesting thing because many of these people seem to have spent uh, um, sometime, uh, uh, this is the thing. A certain amount of time in, in prison, a prison or a psychiatric, yeah, or psychiatric yeah. ward, yeah. or it's near right. an army base or near a navy yeah. base, yeah. Yeah. and they, you know, they release them, then they're back in, and some. So what were they doing in there? Were yeah. they just being in prison, or were they? And being we will never prepared? know because it's a totally controlled uh, environment. But yeah, and that, that's how they use it. Yeah. I would also suggest that sometimes when, a, uh, like for instance, you got the Swedish journalist Jon Gill, who was yes. set, he was put in prison because he officially started criticizing Olaf Palme, exposing some truth. He would put in prison one year, came out as an absolute hero, an icon for the freedom of speech and the free <laughs> word and all of these things. He's wheeled in every single time there's an open case, a big case. His job, I mean, as a journalist, they, everybody polishes glory, mm -hmm. is, and he was the, the chairman of the Swedish Journalist uh, Forbund and so on. His task, I would say, if he is who he would say, would be to go for the truth. Whoever stands in the way, go for the truth. But instead, he's like a doorman, like a gatekeeper, uh, a, a, gatekeeper, yeah, a blocker. And as soon as you even start pointing, he totally goes out and press during court cases and stuff like that and totally 
undermine weaknesses while the case is going on or ridicule people that are really trying to find or call them like he, he I think it was uh, uh, I can't remember who it was like a scum and things like that I mean what type of freedom searcher would do a thing like that I'm just like you say gate gatekeeper yeah. the mm -hmm. power in these uh, the power structure in these different countries have specific gatekeepers and with Jan Guillaume when he came out of prison a hero he suddenly had all of this knowledge about as uh, military intelligence service he's written a lot of books where he knows a lot where did he get this information from he was also he's been open he's openly admitted that he was financed by the KGB and the CIA and Serpo at times as well this is things that he had to admit so what are we looking at we're looking at certain individuals that in his case, I think he went into prison. No, no, he went one. He had one year of education with these different. Uh, so, and then when he came out, he was doing their task. But these people, when we call the patsies, look at the history very, very often. If very, very often, they're like in prison just before they're released, and then they're hit. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's close by is because they need to control them. They need to. This is the whole thing. When you do a force fight, you need to control all parameters. You cannot have like uh, loose cards or wild cards or jokers like this. So you need to prepare and then get it going and do it. Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In a, in a short time as possible. Short time as possible. I believe in, in, in the Belma case, they, they may have fucked some things up uh, in, in periods. Uh, they were pretty long. They, time about doing things and they, they may have learned things about they, they must study these uh, yeah, events the all thing, the time the thing with the Ola Palma case it is extremely complicated because there were several different there were two different operations going on at the same okay. time but also it was messed up during the night Be everything that was prepared went down the drain because the secondary uh, the second, it's very complicated. Yeah. I've done a nine hour interview oh, yeah. Red Eyes Creation. And we can put just to, that. Yes, yeah. please, please. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, exactly, it was totally messed up because the original plan was good, but then it was messed up by the second uh, the second team that was on site mm -hmm. that was there to sabotage. Yeah. And that just messed it up for years and years. So you can say one, one important element is, of course, as much control as possible. And this control is also. Um, controlling a filter of information and, and in that uh, respect I would say that that media in itself as institution is a uh, uh, such a filter that I would call it a gatekeeper filter uh, preventing things from coming out and, and it's not uh, I mean it's not to point fingers at certain <laughs> media because they are all all part of it and we have a, a uh, a version of, of the politik. Um, uh, Klaus uh, uh, mentioned uh, Berlinske Tidene. Uh, for those who, who don't know what that is, it, it's one of the major Danish uh, newspapers, and Politik is also one of the uh, major Danish uh, newspapers. Politik has hmm, a, a certain uh, history of being um, uh, sort of left wing sort of pro-Zionist, not really Zionist as such, but one of its uh, uh, editors, main editors, chief editors, mm -hmm. Herbert Pundik, admitted only that he had been a Mossad yeah. agent. Yeah. So that, that after, was, he after, after he retired. After he retired. Yeah. And this, some of these yeah. old guys will admit things because yeah. if they admit it too soon, it may cause them uh, problems. If I have to say like, also that the politician has a quite pro-Israeli stand when it comes to the Palestinian conflict, yeah. when it yeah. comes to Syria. Yeah. They always uh, support the, the, the anti-Arab mm -hmm. uh, uh, forces in the Middle East, so and, to speak. And we so see also <laughs> the, the, the next editor, she list of editor, uh, Thuja Seidenfeind, was a, a member of yeah. the Bilderberg Group. So uh, there has been, there is some uh, very controlled feeling about uh, politik, but you will find things in, in it that, that, uh, that is, <coughs> That is true, and, and in a, in a harmful way, so to speak, uh, because the filter will always allow harmful things to to come out. So, can I yeah. sorry? Can I point out that yeah. after these operations, one of the ways to get a, a smell of a conspiracy is not what happens, but what does not happen. 
this is the thing. These are one of the signs. Very often the police work just goes into like a standby mode or the, everybody involved gets the time to, to escape and then boom, in they go. They make a total closed-in area, often in the wrong di area. So they really look very closely for evidence in the wrong place and so on. But they really look like they're doing a lot. And media, when you look at the JFK assassination, for instance, because they need to control the information coming out from the site. They need to have it in control until they, the, everything is sorted, then they pump it out. In the JFK assassination, for one whole hour, the whole national tele uh, telephone system went down dead around the assassination. 9-11, same thing, they just blocked down the mobile network. They say that it was because the, the antenna on one of the towers went down. No, the mobiles mm -hmm. didn't work for an hour. When Estonia went down... Nationwide or just in, the, in New York? In New York. Okay. When Estonia went down, yeah. when she was blown up, uh, the whole area on the, on the Baltic coast, the whole uh, uh, communication, radio, everything was blocked while she, she was struggling out there until she went under. Then, boom, they lifted again. There was a major NATO uh, exercise going on at the same time. And here you also see... Um, after, after the Olaf Palme thing, it was only the Prime Minister that was shot. When did it come out? When did the alerts go there? 2.06 was, you know, like almost three hours later. And the real story, 5.06 in the morning. It's only the Swedish Prime Minister. Yeah. And as far as I've been able to find out here in Denmark as well, when these things happened, it was not pumped up. And the, the, the TV wasn't on it right away. There was about an hour delay. This is what I've been explained, told. There was not coverage right away. There were no teams on site right away. Is that true or not? I believe it is. So we have this, if this is true, there's this time delay again. Mm -hmm. Get them out, get them out, I would suggest. Get them out, get them out. Oh, okay, now, come in, come in. We film, we film, we film. Oh, it's a tragedy. But why were you not there? Mm -hmm. Just to inform, I was actually there that night. And I mean, and it seemed, I mean, I were, what uh, can I say I was there because I didn't know in the exact time, but I was walking down the Abuka when the police came towards the place of the killing at, uh, what was it called, Svenevai. Okay. Yeah. Where he was killed. Where he was so killed. To be killed. So I just followed the police to the station, to the train station, and they already blocked off the, the, the train station with the, with the, like, military stuff, you know. And there was like, I guess, uh, maybe 20, 25 vehicles. And and I've, I stayed there for maybe 15, 20 minutes. We didn't know that there was someone shot because we could only come to the, mm. to the crossroad. So we couldn't get further from the Pulu Bloke. And after 15 minutes, I saw the first uh, photographers, like still photographers, mm. arriving. But I didn't see any camera crew. But but when you see the recordings from Norwegian television, so it's, day, no it's daylight, yeah. and it's shot from an apartment. So during the night when it was shot, it was complete pitch black. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the and the voice you heard there was the photographer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you should also uh, ask some questions, Mr. Martin, because you're kind of a little bit outside the circuit, you know. So you you are actually representative of a more uh, normal position, although I know yeah. you're not, you know, but uh, no, but it would be good for you. What I noticed is what was Morden was asking for an elevator <coughs> speech about what happened in Denmark, mm -hmm. and you did, you skipped, kind of skipped that. Okay. We we should maybe uh, just uh, make a brief uh, synopsis because we, we went uh, further than that, um, and of course we could also mention that it happens. Uh, uh, just very close to another uh, main event in, in Europe, the, the Charlie Hebdo. Mm. And I noticed, of course, uh, we, we went to the uh, Jewish synagogue in, in Kostelge and we saw, of course, these signs, Je suis Hebdo. Oh. Je suis, yeah, all that. I, mm. I noticed the sign in, in, uh, in uh, Moscow also, uh, the, the mm -hmm. uh, assassinated uh, uh, Boris. politician, yeah. opposition Himself. politician, Shusmi, and then his name. Yeah. This has, has, has been a brand uh, that has been published uh, and, and, and in good time, I believe, before this event. 
you will see this is one again once again these signs behind that you you need to check out one one area to check out is the stock market uh, where when these conspiracies happen there's very often insider trading people are aware of it's going to happen and just before it happens they do all of these they lock down uh, stock options they lock currencies they do these things very often they're, they're carried out during weekends as well because then the stock market is closed and if it's on a Friday they close it out of respect for the deceased no 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 they lock the door and then they have until Monday morning to fix everything and then they have made an absolute bundle when they deal so this is one thing you can also see insurance policies before they blow up buildings and so on but uh, I totally lost the thread now what I was going to say uh, the thread might, might, might just be uh, following up on, on, on Martin. Could we just have a brief, brief uh, walkthrough of, of, of this uh, Copenhagen case? We are in Copenhagen right now, so of course our, our main theme is what happened here and, and what are the, the, the star-shaped threads going on from that. Yeah. Also, also the political uh, aftermath of it, because oh, yes, there's yeah. some of course, some geopolitical yes, exactly. interesting things. But, but they have some... some, some <coughs> uh, this is... Uh, yeah. what I remember now what I was going to say is that very often when these are carried out false flag operations, the agenda is on standby. And you will see it happens, the reaction is there, and in comes the solution. And very often the solution is very advanced. Do you know? Like the Patriot Act and these things. Incredible documents. 9-11 happens. Boom, it pre it's presented. Because of 9-11, no, sorry, you did not have time to put it together. So you can see the follow-up with, uh, it's almost like they have a whole propaganda type thing waiting with all the slogans, with the colors, when everything on standby. You will see that, boom, it happens, in comes the whole thing. When it comes to Charlie Hebdo, all, I would say all the signs, it's the same font, the same colors all over France. All, so where did that come from? Mm -hmm. You know, you had Olo Palme, all of the posters, like, boom, were they there? Same beautiful photo and with a black band. You will see these things, and then they come with a solution. Like here in Denmark now, after the, the so-called awful event, suddenly, boom, there's a budget proposal. <coughs> One billion Swedish, Danish kroner, yeah. anti-terrorist, with hold, boom, 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 boom. Either they're really, really efficient, or it could have been part of the solution. And now suddenly Denmark also is the host of an anti-terror meeting, international meeting coming up, you know. So, I don't know, I, w I would very much point these things out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be good maybe to, it would be good maybe to have a, a person, you know, like uh, in this elevator version, we can call him Stockholm Sven or Stockholm Syndrome Sven, <laughs> who who's uh, saying, exactly. well, 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 why should there be any reason to suspect anything in in this uh, episode in Copenhagen? Yeah. Okay, can I just say that uh, I've I've done a red eyes interview very lately, one hour just about the Paris, one hour just about Denmark, yeah. to in the details. So anyone who wants to check out the details, yeah, just. When I, when I come, and I, most other researchers that have a, hopefully an open mind, come to these things with not a predetermined, uh, just look at the facts, what happened, is there any incon con, uh, inconsistencies, uh, and so on. And one thing that I've had great uh, help with is that I used to work as an extra on film sets. I used to be in the background on commercial films and so on, one of these people working in the background. And these false flags, when they're staged, and it is like a film set. It is really all the same things, all the same elements, even the same people involved. Directors, lighting, uh, catering people, the people with the makeup, uh, explosives, theater explosives. It's the same. It the is runners. them. You, you should also be, uh, almost be able to see the, the chalk marks on, on the street. Walk till here, wait. They're, it, yeah. they're called cue markers. Yeah, yeah, they're called yeah. cue markers because they, they <coughs> need continuity in the background. Because if you do several takes, you need the same background to mm. move the same way. Otherwise, when you edit it, then maybe whoop, he's jumping there and there. You see that in really bad movies. You see bad somebody sitting drinking coffee. I talk to you. The camera goes yeah. back to me. The guy has disappeared. 
when you went to the loo, it, do, yeah. it doesn't work. I believe there was one of those uh, chalk marks on the street in, in Paris where, where the car stopped. Uh, yeah, the, oh, that, I'm pointing out many of these things, but one very clear pattern that should just, if this had been Colombo, the, the detective, it's like it's so obvious that the car that the, the two so called terrorists jumped out of and uh, shot the guy and so on, it was a Citroën C3 2014 with chrome side mirrors and white lights in the front with a special type of metal wheels. The car that was found where the evidence that the dumped car <coughs> was a Citroën C3 2013 with black side mirrors, no white dirt. So that alone, that alone should just stop this whole discussion. Exactly. Well, it's a theory, it's not. It is not, it is not a real thing. We, we have to do, and why is it important? Because either we live in a world where we've got crazy people running around all the time screaming Allah Akbar, shooting up things or blowing up things mm -hmm. and us looking there. Yeah. That, or we have an enemy within. We have an enemy within, a, like a secret world government that are trying to force us to these events. So it's incredibly important to see where should we focus on. And even, I mean, Huge film sets like like Steven Spielberg and, and uh, you know uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, no, uh, actually Star Wars also, but the Phantom oh, Menace. Yeah. You know, there are, are, are you know uh, websites that will yeah. specialize on finding these uh, uh, mistakes. I found, I found one in, yeah, yeah. in Lord of the Rings. I mean, and why should not? Of course, these are professional people, but they are not member of, of Steven Spielberg's crew, they, they must make mistakes. There, there must be a lot of holes But you, in you have a difference as well, because in a, in a set, film set, there's no tension, no pressure. You can just do how many retakes as possible. You can oh, yeah. edit up. Oh, yeah. Here, we, they have a very strict timeline. It's very stressful sometimes. You, know, you, need to con you can only control a certain area for a certain time. You know, people might come in. You need to get going, get going, do it, do it, do it. So people are stressed, nervous sometimes, and I would also say that nowadays the, the budget isn't what they used to be, the time for preparation isn't what they used to do. I mean, if you look at the JFK assassination, that was an absolute masterpiece. We're still confused, you know, 50 years down the line. 9-11, more sloppy, but still pretty good, more complicated. Nowadays, it's like, come on. It's like, even you can't be proud of it, it's so bad. But still, and they don't treat us with respect. And why? Because we don't deserve it. We have bought this for so many times. It's like the same theme again. And we go, oh, and the same theme again, oh, and the same theme again, oh. I mean, how many times? Yeah. It's this, they don't, this is the beautiful thing. They don't have a lot of variations. They can't variate it because Boogeyman, we're being attacked, here comes the hero. Boogeyman, we're being attacked, here comes the hero. Boogeyman, here. They can't bear. I mean, I think they even tried, you know, like, get some creative people like Jim Carrey going and, you know, to get a new <laughs> character, <laughs> a new Mr. T, a new... But they, they're running out of options. And this is also why they're speeding it up to try and hit us from all different directions, to keep us out of focus. It's also why it's so, so important, because even mainstream narratives uh, actually um, say, and Julian Spusten said the other day, um, the Danish people will inevitably get much more surveillance, and it will not stop unless the Danes, they protest, mm -hmm. which they see no reason to do. Mm -hmm. Testing, testing. Right. I tell you, I see Sweden. I see as a testing ground when it comes to tech, technical stuff and so on. Mm -hmm. It's. I grew up in Sweden. We are very lame, you know. When a Swede is really pissed off, he put a sticker on his car saying, "I'm slightly irritated." That's it. You don't have this. You you do something in Spain, mm -hmm. they get pissed off. They react. They oh, shout. Yeah. They mm -hmm. in Sweden. And this is when you see all the high-tech uh, gadgets and surveillance and digital currencies. They tried out there first. Did it work? Did it work? Yeah, we're fine, we're fine. And then they have pumped up this uh, 
this incredible name around Sweden. It's quality, it's freedom, it's democracy. It's a beautiful country, and that will it gives it va um, validity in other countries. So if it's okay there, come on, bring it on. And maybe Sweden have a, a, a history that has formed this, this special kind of, of yeah. authoritarianism. Maybe they have a, a slight uh, bad conscience of, oh, we didn't get hit so bad in, in the Second World War. Um, uh, th there might be some things here. There, uh, there might be some uh, some uh, old, not very well cleaned out groups from the, the, the Second World War. Sweden was. I mean, they did not participate. No, no, but Sweden there was a lot of people who, who may have yeah. contact Sweden with Sweden has a very old tradition for yeah. centralized, uh, strong power yeah. Yeah. in Stockholm because yeah. of the big, vast territory. But Sweden has also country. a very big, long tradition of bowing. You know, yeah, yeah, bowing. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. Yeah. So as long as the Germans yeah. were the ones winning, let's yeah. bring the truth right. through, come on, on. on. Oh, sorry, you're losing. Yes. Oh, sorry, bring so, it the other way around. So, uh, some, some, it has been claimed repeatedly that Sweden has be, become the wet dream of Huxley's uh, elite uh, uh, means because mm -hmm. uh, a people who are able to police themselves and having internalized this goofy, goofy, naive uh, internalization of uh, policing each other and policing oneself without the use of external power. <coughs> that is, if you control the mind, you control the narrative, you control the history, right? Anyway, it's just so one would ask why? Why would Denmark be on the list? We know there have been, and I know you have have uh, uh, discovered a pattern here that there has been some strange warnings of this uh, new wave of uh, terror attacks. Uh, some hints have been slipped out. First, there was a Dublin event that didn't really uh, work out. Mm. Then there was the Paris event. We can find several reasons for, for Paris being, being a good place here. I was wondering why would Denmark be an, an interesting place? Be, because we have been behaving so well, uh, following the NATO, following the United States. Uh, there's not really much uh, criticism of this agenda in Denmark. We have participated in the Iraq war, the Afghanistan war. We were co-bombing Libya. We are not protesting uh, uh, the Syrian campaign. Uh, Danes do not really know what's going on in, in uh, uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They still believe if it's uh, the Mr. Yeah. Bad Putin, uh, why would Denmark be an interesting place? Anyone here who has uh, an idea about that? You have. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on. I would say that uh, if you want an emotional impact, I do not know uh, the, the big agenda. I'm just suggesting one. When you want an, an emotional impact, uh, it doesn't matter if you blow up something in Syria or, or Baghdad or something like that because it doesn't hit you. But if you do it in a kindergarten mm. or a paradise or mm. the, the Eden of peace, a hit a totally innocent country like Denmark, boom, that, because you're looking globally, you're not. I think you make a mistake if you say this is a local event. You have to oh, yeah. raise your, yeah, yeah. your and see it from there. So that that is one thing reason I think they hit. You know, we had the suicide bomber in Sweden as well. That a similar yeah. thing. Absolute crap, uh, false flag there, didn't even work. You had in Norway when they tried to get people back in, in the line, NATO, and Denmark was on the line. I just want to say that, uh, like I said, I spent some 30 years of my life dedicating to revealing what's going on, not because I'm hateful or want revenge or anything. I just want this madness to stop so it can be this beautiful world it's supposed to be. You know, it's like having a serial killer in the neighborhood that is just in the dark. And uh, uh, so I've come to a, a, an area, uh, I've ended up in this very strange uh, world on a global scale where people contact me. I, I'm, I'm very lucky to be surrounded by world <coughs> experts in these areas, but that also does that people send me stuff. And a couple of months ago, I had uh, an email that was uh, sent to me that said, uh, here are the next planned targets, more or less. Dublin, Paris, Copenhagen, Italy. I did not know who sent it to me. I thought, okay, fine. I put it in my folders. I just, I mean, I have so much of these things, so it was just another one. I, but I saved it. 
And then a, a while ago, there was a man uh, in on Ireland who sent me a photo. He said, this photo is really giving me the creeps. It's being circulated in Irish press. And he sent me, and it's like four photos like this in one. It looks like a postcard almost. And it says, Israel now, Dublin next. And there's a, a photo of a sculpture. It looks like the, the Grim Reaper, death, uh, really dark type of person. Then it says, uh, there's a photo of uh, Mona Lisa with a uh, chador and a big bomb instead. It says, Israel now, Paris next. Then there's a photo of the little mermaid where it says, Israel now, Copenhagen next. And then there's a photo of David in Florence uh, Israel now, Italy next, with a, a suicide bombing thing. So I thought, okay. I didn't really, you know, remember the first one. I just, uh, it sounded, but I, I kept it like that. I, I thought just to, to check it out, I started looking around and there had been a bomb thing in Dublin that, did, uh, that went wrong. ISIS claimed responsibility for it, but it was at the Intel plant in Dublin. Then this thing happened in Paris. Mm -hmm. I went very early or, or quickly I could see, whoops, here is a setup. We're back in the same. And that was when I said, wait a second, wait a second. So I started looking for these things, looking in my folders, and I found Dublin, Paris. Oh my God. Be could it be Denmark next? Could it be? Because they, when you look at the patterns over the years, it's almost like they're playing with, I don't know why they do it, if it's some kind of, psychopathic thrill they get out of I don't get it but they put clues out there in front of us just like Whoa, and then boom they hit us knowing their way of thinking their mentality I thought oi, 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 oi. if this is if this could possibly be true let me get it out there before it happens so we can turn it around so what I did on several different interviews I said since drills are a very great uh, part of these things they have these drills that suddenly go live and, and suddenly it's a false flag. So I said, I went out saying, please, please, please be aware if you see in your local newspaper, if you see here on the local radio, if you whatever, that they're having a drill in your hometown, in everywhere, it will look like a film set, it would be like something like that for your protection. If there is some kind of military drill, go there, bring your cameras, bring your friends, film these people that are doing it and make it very, very obvious that they're being observed because maybe it is a drill for your protection or it is something more sinister. If it is something more sinister, then maybe we can get them to get cold feet and stop it. Okay, so a day, a few days went and then I was contacted by a man here in Copenhagen and he said, uh, you know, I was walking home today and I saw this poster in central Copenhagen. It was a big poster with a nice girl in uniform saying, tonight we're going to have a security drill at the Nørreport train station in I central remember. Copenhagen. Do, do we have a picture of it? Have you, have you saved the picture? Anyway, he sent me the photo. I, 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 have this. I, I can give it to you. Okay. okay, he sent me the photo of the poster just saying, could this be something like that? I said, yes, thank you, thank you for being so observant. So what I did was, I went out on Facebook big time saying, please, 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 anyone nearby, tonight, it was the night uh, uh, to the 14th of January, go there, film them, be there. If there is something sinister going on, then let's expose it before it even happened. Nothing happened. So I thought, at least now nobody got hurt. Maybe I was paranoid. Maybe I was taking, you know, like, but nothing happened. So I was happy. Then one month later, on the exact hour, boom, it happened here in Copenhagen. One of the places they hit were very close to the same train station as they were hit, Nørreport station. The synagogue is not very far from there. <clears throat> so, of course, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Because if this happened, then Florence is next. Yeah. And so I put a lot of effort exposing the details of the Danish one as well and warning about the one in Florence. So we can stop this. So I David, David and Florence. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, well. well, I was wondering, the, the, the original pictures or graphics yeah. that you got from, it was from Ireland? It was circulated. It says um, it was tweeted around also, and it, saw, it says something like, "Ireland is I, uh, Israel," or "Is I, I need to see." I, 
Maybe yeah. we can post the, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. image here. The Parliament of Ireland has. I was very intrigued by this. Yes, it's a very, 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 very things were out you know why Ireland, Ireland has been hit. They tried to hit Ireland, yeah. uh, by the way, and it was because the Irish Parliament actually uh, were supporting the Palestinian state. So it's again maybe and this, this is way also could this be, is exactly yeah, what yeah. they did with in Paris as well. Also, yes, yeah, as yeah. far as I know, France had just started yeah. accepting. And it's ha- Italy yes. is also doing the same with right. uh, Matteo Renzi. Mm-hmm. Matteo Renzi is the former mayor of Firenze, and uh, this is actually having quite good relations to the Palestinians. He, he is also having quite good relations to Putin. Actually, he's one of the most pro-Putin politicians in Western Europe when it comes to to the conflict in the Ukraine. So, and he's going to to Russia on fifth uh, of March this March. So I think that could be an attack very soon in, in, in Italy. Also because ISIS has actually said that our camps, our terrorist camps are now preparing to attack exactly. Rome yeah. and <laughs> Italy as a whole. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah, already said big, that. It's a big monster psyop mindfuck operation of uh, en masse, you know, the people. But I just want to add um, that after Copenhagen, it was act- and after, after the terror drill that was supposed to take place the 14th of January and then subsequently the real terror event happened. It, uh, um, somebody actually wrote on the net, uh, it's difficult to prove that the reason for, 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 for this was that it was actually being outed in advance mm-hmm. due to the fact that people, they are cognizant, there's light on the darkness, they are aware of the modus operandi, and therefore it could very well be that it had uh, been uh, prevented, you know? But Italy is the next, I think it's, it's very clear that Italy could be the next uh, target. Actually. But I very yeah. much hope that through things like this, it would be, ex- before, because if we come out with it before, mm-hmm. yeah. it would be very difficult for them to pull it off. Yeah. Can I also say that they, for some reason, they are very much, the people behind them, they're very much into certain dates when they carry these things out. It's always on Remembrance Day, Patriots Day, Veterans Day, <coughs> Halloween, uh, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day was was the one. But also because this is one of the things you when you look at this, I am not an expert on why they do it. I'm just saying they do it. So I always check out what is the name of the street, whether this, where's the location. Check Google Map. What is the date? Is there is a historical date and so on. And if you look at the theme that we're looking at when it came to Paris and Denmark, it was about the cartoons against the, or making fun of, of Muhammad the Prophet, mm-hmm. okay? You go back in time, and in uh, 1989, there was a death threat put on Salman Rushdie, the, the author, uh, Salman Rushdie, it was uh, Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini who put a death threat, a fatwa, fatwa. it's called, fatwa, on Salman Rushdie. Now this was put out on the 14th of February 1989. Okay, we're talking about the exact same thing happened and even as far as I know, the title of the talk was all included the word fatwa as well here in Copenhagen. This is what I've been told. Okay, so we got that one. You got also the theme that is the prophet being uh, somebody's making joke of it. I would say we're looking like almost like what Rocky one two three four five because they keep repeating it like Coca Cola Coca Cola Coca Cola Toyota so, Toyota no that's ISIS they're sponsoring yeah. ISIS every <laughs> single <laughs> time ISIS <laughs> is there you see Toyota yeah. and uh, then you had uh, first it was Salman Rushdie then it was Yulans Posten then it was Lars Filks then it was Charlie Hebdo and then it was here it's the same theme again and again and again. So we look at the date, uh, it was Halloween, which is a romantic holiday. Uh, it, it's actually uh, an old Roman, it doesn't matter, but Valentine was an old Roman, um, uh, quite high political figure under Claudius, uh, the Empire Claudius. And Claudius was getting pissed off because he had problems controlling his soldiers because they kept falling, falling in love and marrying and yeah. stuff. They didn't want to go up and <laughs> chop the head of people. So Claudius said, he banned all types of, of romantic relationships, including getting married. And this uh, Valentine, uh, he said in, in secrecy, he kept wed- get wedding people, you know, uh, making uh, uh, marriages, yeah, the ceremonies. Mm-hmm. So Claudius chopped the head of him on the 14th of February. So it was an, if you look at it, it was an anti-violent act 
that ended up in anti-war act. Somebody tried to stop war that was sacrificed. So it's so almost like a, a ritual, a, an attack on on beauty, uh, on on righteousness, on on, uh, the, on justice, on uh, hu humanity, yeah. on nature. It's an attack on all the the, the core values that that we precious. Exactly, so much. and their agenda is <clears throat> war, death, and destruction. This is why you will see them keep repeating it on Veterans Day, Remembrance Day. Um, all of these things and war monuments in the na nearby Ottawa shooting. You can see all of these things. They're shot on the, uh, you know, just uh, you have this big war monument, 1914, 18, and they keep repeating it. War is the one they want, and they want us to become patriots because oh, we're being p attacked. We must accept and support our troops. You know, we must support their support agenda. Troops. Yeah. So we look at the 14th. That was that. And it's also used in, in some satanic ways. I know this is one thing that keeps repeating as well, that uh, Valentine's Day is used. Then. Maybe we should then just uh, show the, the, uh, the Politik newspaper here, a uh, very strange um, front page from uh, <laughs> the, 9th uh, the 9th of February. And that would be uh, just, just five a little days week before, uh, five, days. 40, yeah. five days before. But, but it's much... It's 666? Much it's 666, and the 666 doesn't really make sense with the rest of it, I would say. And one of the symbols they normally use, when they, they use the radioactive sign, they use the pyramids, they use the all-seeing eyes, and so on. So here we are, 666, that's the number of the beast. You got the pyramid shape here with the radioactive sign. You said the sound of Chernobyl, I don't know, I don't, have no idea the background of, uh, around Chernobyl, but I'm sure going to look into it. You got what could be very staring eyes, the eyes, the all seeing eye. And you have here, this is five year, days before it, it says, let the people draw the prophet as they want. I'm saying, if this was only one event, one thing, but when it keeps repeating, that's when you have to start noticing. Uh, uh, Stockholm Syndrome Sven has said, I, 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 for farm. Uh, they are coincidence, uh, all uh, the uh, conspirations, the red card, I go here, Lamarck. Well, there you go. Yeah, we I'm just, to, we to think, yeah. Uh, just one little uh, <coughs> tiny uh, information when we yeah. went uh, to, uh, to see what. Uh, to just take a leak on the toilet in in the in the uh, in the library of Copenhagen, which the main library is just uh, above the or uh, on the other side of the street to the Jewish synagogue in Kristallgate, Crystal Night and Crystal Street. We found this little uh, piece of graffiti, and we will show it. Uh, this up there on on the screen <laughs> in the mix. Saying 666, Satan loves you, reversed cross. So, but, but coincidence, the well... No, but the, th the reason why the library is interesting, I think, this yeah. is why I, mm -hmm. I uh, exposed it, is that when you look at these different false flag operations, one of the things they need, they need logistics, they need... To because we're looking at a, at a thing that will take some hours to carry out, and sometimes with a lot of people involved, technical stuff, all of this, you need to be able to do it when people from the outside will not notice. So you will often do it on a holiday in a closed area. And you need access to toilets, cafeteria, you know, sometimes dressing rooms, you need the electricity, you need somewhere to park the vehicles and, and so on. So this is one thing to look out for, especially when they carry them out in back street, narrow back streets. Narrow back streets, excellent, very easy to, to shut off in both ends. So you have a controlled parameter. You can control the people coming in and out without it being visible there. But when you look at the Boston Marathon, which was on Patriots Day, uh, there was a, a drill, a bomb drill, that the Boston Globe went out with. And they said, this is going to happen, and boom, right after it happened. So you look at, you go down Google Map, you look at the exact site where the bombs went off in Boston, you do a 180 uh, and you're looking straight into the entrance of the Boston Public Library. Why the library? Perfect location to have as a, as a center for the whole thing to take place. You go to the second chapter in this event here in Denmark, which is the synagogue. You look, you stand straight in front of the synagogue. You do a 180, you're looking straight into the entrance of the Danish Copenhagen main library. Once again, 
perfect spot for to carry out one of I just want to point out also this is the second attack that is aimed at this one. There was another in eighty five where it was a Palestinian yeah. attack that didn't uh, work out. Mm. A claimed parrot. I have not looked into it. I'm saying a claimed because when he just because we've been fed in media that this is what happened, I prefer doing my own investigation first. Uh, that was when they bombed uh, Ben Abed in Copenhagen, right? I don't know. Ben in a, in a, uh, the airplane, uh, the air uh, as, office. As far as, I, yeah. I th- as far as I know, it's American North Orient. Okay, but LL is very close also. They okay. have office. Okay. On the, on, I think on the, please, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. very interested in this happening. Yeah. But ju- yeah. if I can just go back to the date on the 15th of, the, of uh, February, because they they do many of these false flags on the same dates that we were talking about. And in 19, 1898, there was a major false flag operation uh, when they blew up the USS Maine on the 15th of February in the port of uh, Havana on Cuba. It, it has now uh, been proved that either it blew up by accident or it was an inside job. Spain had absolutely nothing to do with it, but the US mm-hmm. used that as a reason to attack Spain. And the result was that Spain had to give up the Philippines, the Puerto Rico and Guam. Once again, on the exact date. And the name of the place, this cultural cafe, is the kutun, which means the gunpowder keg. And another, the, I think the almost the most famous of all false flags were the so-called gunpowder plot in the Guy Fawkes thing where it said that he was going to blow up uh, the parliament. That is also where the whole anonymous have gone there, mm-hmm. the, from the mask from. So these and, uh, things... This you, you had a similar event in, 16, uh, in the 1600s. Well, yeah, I don't think it's the same, but it was also possibly, you know, that, um, I was in England visiting some people and we were talking about the Freeman movement, and we were talking about uh, original law, and then something called Maritime law, or Martian law, or whatever, we're, we're not an entity anymore, we're not a person, we're just a social security number, we're like a corporate uh, entity. And so I looked at it on the internet, and so I found out that it was very strange, because we're back to the 666 thing again. It was the year 1666. So London just had been subject to a great fire, or large parts of the city had burned down. There was a black plague around. And in the wake of all this turmoil, they came in with this maritime law thing. Which, which is a huge thing, and a basis and for it the whole, is, it whole takes modern strong uh, today. juristic system. Yeah. So it was kind of like, you know, like we're talking about a false flag operation and then, you know, the symbolism of the year 1666. Yes. Mm-hmm. You couldn't even make this up. This is real stuff. But this and is, this is, mm-hmm. I don't know about these yeah. things, but they play your mind. They yeah. really go to, I mean, we're talking about that these are advanced uh, agencies that really do psyops in, in these things as well. And uh, like we said, nine nine one one. this is a, The, the date, I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was the <clears throat> exactly 10 years before 9-11, the big, when the towers went down, that was when George Bush Sr. went out uh, uh, for the first time openly mm-hmm. presenting the, uh, the New World Order. Yeah. It was the day when uh, Salvador Allende was killed. Mm-hmm. It was the day when the Swedish Prime Minister Anna Lind was murdered, or the day she 9/11. died. 9-11. Okay. And, uh, They have seven seven. They, they, these mm-hmm. numbers nine eleven seven seven six six six. They keep repeating. I know the Santa Barbara uh, mass shooting there. Everything that round that was seven eleven. Seven eleven kept repeating, repeating. It was like seven killed, eleven wounded. There were seven bullet holes there, eleven there. Mm-hmm. It was like outside of seven eleven. It was seven eleven. It was seven. The video was edited seven minutes, Malaysia. eleven seconds. It was just again and again. The and Malaysian plane, uh, which was shot down over Ukraine, was shot down 27th of July, twenty two seven seven. Okay. So and yeah. and I just want to say that this mm-hmm. uh, guy that was shot down here at Svanevai uh, one, the guy that is uh, said to be the guilty one of the Danish. Uh, attack Omar uh, Hosang. Yeah, if that was his name, mm-hmm. and uh, it there's they're interviewing one witness, and he said he saw him co- go down, that he was shot and fell down right outside the 7-Eleven 
I have been in the area, there is no 7-Eleven anywhere nearby. Why did they even mention it? Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, for some reason, they keep pumping out with these things. So these okay. people who, who do this, uh, we can say several things about them. They are very well, well prepared, they have a very long-term planning, and they seem to have a, some strange kind of f flavor for rituals. Christine Lagarde, the, the yeah. chairman of, of, uh, of uh, IMF, actually, she had a, a very curious um, yeah. speech recently. Mm -hmm. It's on YouTube where she's talking about seven. She's uh, u using a lot of seven, uh, you know, uh, special things. It, it, there's nothing in her talk, in her speech about it, but she's using this, this, uh, this number, seven. And I don't know why and how she's using it, but it's very interesting. Can you, do you remember that? Yeah, she's, yeah, she's yeah. making uh, almost explicit reference to numerology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah. I think we are in an area where it's very easy for people to point finger and say conspiracy well, yeah. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So and I, maybe that's, I, the, maybe that's the, the whole point of it. Maybe, maybe, Please point all your fingers. Maybe. Maybe. You know, I, all I, I just yeah. pointing the things out, not yeah. making any judgment yeah. of it. I'd like to come with, with an angle on, on you know, the 911 nine thing. Uh, I talked I talk with an Israeli here a couple of years ago, and so he said, well, in, in the, the Hebrew or the Jewish tradition, it says something called Tisha Ab Ab, which means it's 9-11 in Hebrew, or rather it's 11 of the night, because they have, you know, the things the way around, but it is the same as 9-11, Tisha Ab Ab, and he said, this is an important date for, for, for Israel, because in their history, it is two times Israel was destroyed first by the Greeks, and then second time by the Romans, and it happened on the same date, on Tisha Abav, which means it happened on 9-11. So it's a day of mourning for the Israelis, 9-11, the destruction of Israel. But it's a different calendar, so that it's not the same as the in, the, in our calendar, 9-11, but it is 9-11. Mm. So there's some kind of association here. But, but it's like it's like the word conspiracy mm -hmm. has uh, retarded the minds of people and it, as you said it had, had been weaponized by CIA to discredit uh, critics uh, critics of the Warren uh, Commission so it's a, it's a it's a height of irony that people who are, who are using this term automatically to discredit other people are actually carrying a word that they do not know the origin of uh, which in itself is is kind of uh, ironic, right? And um, I also want to mention that the New York Times and the Guardian has actually, as the first uh, Western newspapers in the world, the alleged most recognized newspapers, uh, actually said that most of the um, terror plots in the United States they admit through human rights right uh, watch uh, analysis that uh, stems from the fact that it's again provocateurs it's uh, fbi it's like who are doing it themselves yeah. Yeah. so so i mean it's almost like a crazy admittance and, and nobody's actually i mean hasn't been in danish newspapers but it's been in the guardian and it's been in new york times in 2012 uh, 2013 that um, 14 also that most of the terror plots only four in the united states are not uh, um, from uh, uh, an, uh, from a fbi source no but if you you got like judge napolitano he he goes out big time and says all of the events that they look in i think it's 23 different so-called terrorists every single time supported, trained, equipped by the FBI. This is why I think we're at a time where you, we, we should almost try to rename these organizations because they think they sound so for our protection, but they're really not. But I, w I wouldn't like to say that m many people that are not aware of these things think that we live in a totally crazy world that are filled with terrorists, that, are ex that are, there is a risk of us being blown up uh, every single di day and so on. I would humbly suggest that what we're looking at is like a rock band on a global tour. A theatre group, it, I would suggest that we're seeing the same people running around in black uniforms in Paris, Denmark, Sydney, Ottawa, 
and so on. It's the same people, the same background acts. I'm really focusing now on trying to identify the background ones as well. And, and, and could, could we just hold that thought? Because maybe we should just take a little break uh, by now. And, 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 and that would be the, the uh, first word to, to put in here. Let's look at the theater a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it is a theater. Very good. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.